Good evening, good evening everyone and welcome to this evening's evening prayer, night prayer. Today is Ascension Day, the 21st of May and um, uh, we pray that uh, you had a blessed day and uh, not too much of a busy one and you're ready to say goodbye to this Ascension Day and um, to ask God's grace upon your sleep, upon your night, and to thank him for his goodness and mercy to you this day that he, he, gave, us, he gave us. Ascension Day. Um, I won't say much about it because I already said this some this morning about what Ascension Day is and why it's important. And uh, again, I will say some more about that again on Sunday in my sermon, um, on the, uh, which will be Ascension Sunday. Just to say that I didn't say this morning that Ascension Day is, is um, uh, the, the, between Ascension Day and Pentecost, which is next Sunday, is nine days or ten days if you count the, the Ascension Day. And those ten days are historically, traditionally in the church as days of prayer and fasting in preparation for the Holy Spirit coming upon the, the, the believers on, uh, on Pentecost. Um, the reading for Sunday, you'll see where in Acts 1, after Jesus ascended, it said the disciples gathered in Jerusalem and prayed. And then in chapter 2, he says, while they were praying in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came. You get the feeling that they were praying all week for 10 days or so. Uh, and so in the Church of England, there is a, there is a, um, a, a thing called Thy Kingdom Come that the Archbishops ask us to do during this 10 days or 9 days of Ascension, um, between Ascension and Pentecost. And it's a time for us to pray. And the, the church has asked us to not only pray for ourselves, but the, the idea is we are to pray thy kingdom come. We are to pray for the kingdom of God to come into the world and, and, and for, the, for, the, for Jesus Christ to return and set up his kingdom and, and uh, enthrone uh, himself uh, in the world uh, so that all eyes will see him and every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. That's the concept. But what the, the, in, a, in, a, in a sort of minute form, it is also to pray. To the, the, what, what they have asked us to do is to, to, to find five people who do not know Jesus. To pray for the kingdom of God to come in their personal lives. For, for their own personal kingdom. For the for the kingdom of God to come in them. That is for them to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So the idea is you choose five people and between the in these nine or ten days pray for those people by name leading up to Pentecost and pray for the God's Holy Spirit to transform those people and change them from within and make them new new people, new individuals. As you know, I have been praying throughout this these days of Ramadan as for Muslims, and um, as Ramadan also comes to an end this weekend, um, another thing I ask for you is to pray for Muslims, especially. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday night when they celebrate the Eid festival. Pray that Muslims will turn to Christ. It's, it's a time for us to pray. Um, if we want to change the world, we're going to pray. If, if we want to see God change people's lives, if we want to see the kingdom of God come in individual lives, in our world, in the Muslim world, we pray. And so these nine days I will be praying, yes, in addition to my five people, be praying for Muslims everywhere, even as Ramadan comes to an end, for them to know Christ as their risen Lord and Savior. So that's my introduction. Let's get straight into our prayer tonight. So, O oh God, make speed to save us. 
O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. To you be glory and praise forever. From the darkness of death you have raised your Christ to the right hand of your majesty on high. The pioneer of our faith, his compassion, his passion accomplished, has opened for us the way to heaven and sends on us the promised spirit. May we be ready to follow the way and so be brought to the glory of his presence where songs of triumph forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And so let that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so let's have our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name amen and so uh, our psalm for this evening our psalm for this evening is psalm 8 psalm 8 lord our our lord how majestic is your name in all the earth you have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them, you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. And so I read the commentary by Tim Keller. It's called Wonderful Care. The universe reveals God's glory. Aren't humans just specks of dust in this vastness? Physically, yes, yet we fill the mind of God. The astonishment of the psalmist should be ours as well. Why should God care about us? Because he has made us in his image and given us the world he created to care for as his agents. Living with care for the land, 
sea and air, and all who live there, and doing justice for every human being stamped with God's image brings God glory. As a human race, we are not doing this very well, but Jesus has come, hallelujah. And eventually the world will be under his feet and then everything will be made right. Amen. So let's pray. Majestic God, how is it possible that we fill your mind? You love and care for us so much. You were willing to become a weak infant and vulnerable child, all in order to save us. Now help us, we pray, in all our daily interactions to treat every person we meet each day as a being infinitely precious in your sight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so our reading for this evening, our reading for this evening, um, Ascension, Ascension Day, is actually Revelation chapter 5. Revelation, the last book of the Bible, chapter 5. We just did a series of studies on the book of Revelation during Lent, so it should become fresh to those who were at this, um, this study. Revelation chapter 5, actually the entire chapter. So, let's listen to God's word. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the world. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth 
and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be praise and glory and honor and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a scene. Amen. Who are they worshipping? The lamb who was slain. The lion. The lamb. I love this picture. It's heaven. In heaven, you have this great scene with Jesus taking the scroll. The one who is worthy to open the scroll and to reveal the purposes of God. The scroll, if you remember, for those of you who were at the Lent course, the scroll represents the, the purposes and plans of God for all humanity, for throughout all history, for all creation. And so the unfolding of the scroll is the re revelation of God's plans, the revealing of God's purposes for the world. And so John sees this scroll, but there is no one, no one in all of the universe, spiritual or physical, is able, is, is, is worthy enough to reveal the plans of God, to reveal the purposes of God for humanity, to open the scroll. And John wept. And wept because there is no hope for humanity if we can't find someone worthy enough to open the scroll. Human beings are doomed forever. But the angel said, do not weep. There is one who can open the scroll, who is, who is worthy to open the scroll. And to reveal the purposes of God and the redemptive plan of God for humanity. That one is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to worship. Um, I, and again, you have this beautiful picture. The, the, the angel says, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has conquered and he is worthy to open the scroll. John was told that the lion is going to open the scroll. And when he turned to look to see a lion, he saw a lamb. Instead of seeing a lion, he sees a lamb and not just any lamb. But a lamb with a cut on his throat, that with blood dripping. A slain lamb. And the picture is that the, the lion has conquered, but he hasn't conquered through might and power and strength. He conquered through sacrifice, through weakness, through death. I can't tell you how powerful this scene is. And I, and I can't tell you how my heart bursts just to think about it and to amaze over this. But I gotta stop. And of course they sing. They sing and they sing and they sing and they sing. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to take the scroll. Why is this lamb lion worthy? Because he was slain and his blood was spilled. And through his blood, he purchased human beings from every tribe, language, nation, everywhere in the world. And he's brought them into a kingdom of priests a, a, a people who are now kings and priests into his kingdom. And so we sing not to anyone else, but to the lamb, the lion, the lion, the lamb, who has conquered through sacrificial death. And through him, God's purposes 
is revealed. God's redemption has come to humanity. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. And the four living creatures say, Amen. The, the, the 24 elders fell down and worship. And they say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Meditate on this as you go to sleep tonight. I can't. I, 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 yeah. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who has conquered the Lamb, who triumphed over his enemies by, by sacrifice, by dying, by being, by, by willingly, by willingly dying in our place. We thank you, O oh God, for this Savior, this amazing God, who has bought us, bought us with his blood, so that we can be free, so that we can have life, so that we can be grafted into his kingdom as kings and priests to serve him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, the exalted Lord, the King, the Lion who has triumphed, the Lamb. So tonight, Lord, we, we bring our own lives to you. We bring our own concerns to you, Lord, because we know that you are the Lamb who cares for us because you died for us. Lord, we bring our own concerns, our own anxieties, our own worries to you. Sickness, pain, whatever it is that we are going through tonight, we bring it all to you. Some of our members are grieving over the death of loved ones. We think of the uh, Akos family. We think of Veronica, who's grieving over the the death of her brother Orville yesterday. We pray for her. Remember Stella and uh, remember Charity as well and others, Lord, who might be grieving tonight over the loss of a loved one. We are so grateful for this, this Lord Jesus who's promised us that our loved ones who died in Christ are not lost, <laughs> but they are in your presence. And one day we shall be reunited with them around this throne and sing glory and honor and power and praise be unto Jesus. And so, Lord, we, we pray for these, your children. We pray for your comfort upon them. We ask, Lord, that you'll give them the comfort they need tonight. And may they sleep peacefully at rest tonight knowing Lord that you have all things in control and that you you reign and you are on the throne in the middle of the universe and you are in, and you are the sovereign Lord who oh Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth and so, Lord, whatever we go through, whatever we went through today, whatever we shall go through tomorrow, tomorrow by your grace, we know that you are still reigning. And that, Lord, we ask that you dethrone us, dethrone ourselves from, our, from the throne of our hearts and, and be enthroned, O oh Lord. We, we crown you as king in our lives in our individual lives, may your kingdom come in our hearts. Come in, Lord Jesus, and establish yourself as king and ruler and authority in our lives. Dethrone self and enthrone God, Lord Jesus, we pray. So that Lord, whatever we go through, we will not be rattled, we will not, we will not, 
be in despair because Lord you are on the throne and you are in charge Lord we might not know how things turn out we might not know every detail of your plan but we know you and because we know you and you love and care for us so much whatever we go through in this life we know Lord that you are in charge of this you've got this <laughs> and we don't need to worry we don't need to fret. We don't need to be anxious about tomorrow. Because Lord Jesus, you owns tomorrow. And so Lord, we pray for our, our family. We pray for our church family. We remember those who are sick. We think of uh, Jackie and Rihanna tonight. Remember them, Lord, in your mercy. And so Lord, we bring them to you. And uh, Lord, just... All those who might be in pain tonight, any form of discomfort, Lord, we pray for your healing touch upon them. May your kingdom come upon their lives. May they feel the presence of Jesus in their bodies tonight, not just in their hearts and in their soul, but in their mind and in their bodies. Lord Jesus, bring healing and wholeness to bodies that are broken tonight. Oh God, we entrust them to you. Because you are the you are the healer, you are the great physician, you are the enthroned Lord. Today, as we remember this day as a ascension day, we, we, we will not forget, Lord, that you are the enthroned one. And so we pray that you will rest with us tonight. We pray for the five people in our hearts, especially for the, the next, the, the coming nine days leading up to Pentecost. We pray, Lord, some of them are family, some are friends, some, some are neighbors, but we pray for them. We pray that they are, their hearts will be transformed, their lives will be converted. We pray that your kingdom come in the hearts and minds of these your people. These, Lord, that we have on our hearts. We pray for Muslims. Again, we pray for Muslims all over the world who are coming to the end of their Ramadan fast this weekend. We pray, Lord Jesus, for transformation in Muslims, in Muslim world, in the Muslim countries, and in Muslims right here in the UK. We pray, Lord, that they will come to know Jesus. The scales will fall from their eyes and they will see the risen Christ and they will they will fall down on their faces before him and say, my Lord and my God, and worship him as the one who sits on the throne who is worthy to be worshipped. And so, Lord, we pray for Muslims everywhere, especially those in our own community and please, all those in the Muslim world. We bring these to you tonight, Lord, and so many others that's on our heart. We bring them all to you tonight. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll hear our prayer in your mercy, in your compassion. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let's pray in one of the night prayers, a few of the night prayers. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to its close and preserve us in peace. And let your blessings be always upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And for all for your love's sake. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All right, let's, let's sing our theme song as we say goodnight. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. And give you a restful night. Amen. <laughs>